Another month down, here are all the games I completed in March. The very first game that I completed was a Nintendo Switch Online add-on that just was released a little bit ago, and that is Killer Instinct. Rare Replay released some more games, and I'm so grateful that this fighter is now in the hands of a new generation to try it out for the first time, because they get to see how difficult this game is. It's not for the faint of heart. It's a fighter that you have to know your combos. If you don't know your combos, you're going to get destroyed every single fight. The curve is very, very, like, inclined. It's just really a battle the whole time. I had a good time with this. I loved me some epic combos, and I loved the voiceover of that guy. He's amazing. So definitely try this out. If you are not sure, you can pick it up this cart. Uh, it's not a very expensive cart if you're wanting to be the original all the way through. So try it out. After that, I realized I don't think I played Killer Instinct Gold and I decided to pick it up and play it so it's on Rare Replay if that if you're unable to find it on the N64 it's another game that I was like oh my gosh let's try this out there's a unique twist to it uh there's still the fighting is ridiculously hard but at the very end here's a hint for you if you have the boss at the very end Make sure you do a combo at the very end or uppercut the guy because he does not give way at the very like last, like you get the bar down all the way and you're like, oh, I should be done. Took me a couple times to figure that out because I did a, a combo and uppercut him and he like, kind of like um, when you throw somebody in the pit for Mortal Kombat, same thing happened. He got destroyed. So I was like, cool. Want to give everybody a little hint on that one, but enjoy this. I still think the Super Nintendo version is better. I'm just an OG at heart for anybody else who loves gold. I'm not knocking the game. It's a great game. It's just the 3D aspect kind of threw me off a little bit. I was still in a fighting kick and I decided to play Battle Arena to Shenden. Yes, I have that on my classic mini for PlayStation and I wanted to just play it all the way through. I will say this is kind of like Soul Calibur meets um, kind of like one of those fighters where you have big epic battles where you can like one hit the person and knock all the way through their health bar. But it also leaves you open for them to do the same thing. It is a back and forth kind of kind of game where you could really lose a lot of health in five seconds and then still win because you knock them down a couple times. So. Very, very seldom do I see people talk about this game, and I do see people that when I said I had completed the game, they're like, this is a soul crusher, and I'm like, yeah, it can be. When you, If you don't practice and figure out your character you have chosen, you will just be like, kind of like Killer Instinct. You will be the type of fighter that's going to be, nah, it's not for me. So I enjoy it. It's a classic launch game, and I will always love the long box, even though I will probably never pick it up because of the price, but... I still enjoy the game. After that, I decided to play a game I have never played before all the way through. Probably played a little bit, but I have seen the story. I have seen MVL and Retro Mikey play this game front to back. And I wanted to give it a try now that it is remastered. And that is Super Mario RPG. This is an amazing RPG. It's a shorter game. I like short games when it's actually good. I will admit it is an easy game, but that's because I've played uh, several RPGs to get myself ready for this. And I do see where the inspiration for Sea of Stars really takes home from the battle system, the turn paced RPG system. I love it when it's done right. And they did it correctly. I do love the, the bosses and I love that Bowser is in the game and helping you out. It's a good time. So if you have not tried this out, definitely pick it up. It's a great time. I had fun with my, I think I had like 20 hours of this game and I love that time. I don't get me wrong. I do love RPGs when you get 60 plus hours, but sometimes I do need a refresher and I got a refresher from this. So definitely try it out. After that, this is one of the first disappointments I've had for the year. I know for some weird reason all the remasters have this and I don't know why. And so this is not a Switch version. This is actually the PlayStation 4 and that is 
Saints Row the Third Remastered. Sadly, this is not a great remaster. It's glitchy. It has moments where it freezes, the frame rate drops, there's times where I'm waiting for something to load only to see it just stay stagnant and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, it's not frozen, it's just loading. It's a PlayStation 4 game. It shouldn't be loading like a PlayStation 3 game. It's very, very bad at certain points. I've seen myself play this game multiple times and I know how long it should load. The Xbox 360 loads faster than this game. That's bad. <laughs> I don't mind the, the face swapping, the changing of the characters, how they look, if I can actually enjoy the game. The cutscenes look okay. But the only thing that looks super amazing is the still pictures that you see while the game is loading. That is sad because it looks the same. Like when you look at everything, when you're playing the game, it looks like what they did was they just changed the cutscenes and then they left the gameplay the same. <laughs> kind of sad. It really is weird. Now, I will say you do get all the DLC. That's one of the only bonuses that this game has. But other than that, just play the original. I don't recommend this version unless you want to have some more platinum trophies because the trophies are brand new for the remasters. So, hey, it happens. I keep getting remasters thinking it's going to be great. Super Mario RPG proved me wrong again and again. I do see great remasters it's just this one for some reason don't know why maybe they rushed it it's just one of the ones that i say mm, you're gonna be a disappointment for the year yay now i got onto a guitar hero kick and i decided to play the first one was guitar hero 3 legends of rock this was the one that i enjoyed a lot because i played it more because of the battles you could battle people you could have couch co-op and I remember that and I really enjoy it. So you play as multiple characters. I'll give you a hint who I played. She has pink hair. If you know who it is, put in the comments below what you think it is, who the character is. Um, you have Slash. You have a lot of great epic guitar players in this game that you battle. The story is you are a band. You progress from the low totem pole and you work your way up. You get sponsors, you have Gibson in this all over the place. It's a great game. I play this every so often, but I decided to finish the story again because I wanted to go all the way to the end and I had a fun time with it. The classic feel never gets old. I will keep playing this game until I am dead. Then I went back to the original and I played Guitar Hero. This is a fun game. Uh, I don't know why they didn't have battles in this maybe they just decided to change it up to keep the game fresh but the button layout's a little bit different fun fact you can play these games with a controller so if you have a regular controller and you see this game pick it up you don't need the guitar it doesn't really matter you just use the triggers and um there is the circle button and you can play and have a good time with the game I do enjoy this. I wish we get more Guitar Hero in the future one day. Hopefully. Never know. We'll see what happens. But yeah, great game. Then it's a Guitar Hero game that I have never played. This is on the backlog, so this is checked off. And that is Guitar Hero Aerosmith. It's a fun game. Um, you actually get to see interviews. You start off in the very beginning, which is kind of weird. Um, I don't know why they did this, but they have your regular character that you and again, pink hair. I still stayed with the same character throughout the whole three games. But then you play as Aerosmith. So what you do is you are the band. You are the opening act for them. And if you do really well, you earn Aerosmith for that venue. So the whole goal is to be so good at the, the three songs that you play that Aerosmith takes over and plays the next two to three songs. But it's kind of like hit or miss for me on that part. That's the only thing that I was weird about was that. But I enjoyed the battles. You still battle them. There's only one battle though. <laughs> I was kind of bummed. I get it. They want you to see the, the progression of Aerosmith and all the storyline. But I was like expecting a couple more battles. Like it's like I felt like oh I'm, I'm waiting for the battle because three you got a lot of battles. But this one didn't have anything like that. So that was the only thing I wish they changed. But other than that I had a good time with the game. I enjoyed it. The only thing I don't recommend for people who hate Aerosmith is not going to like this game. 
everybody else, if you like rhythm games, you like Guitar Hero, you're going to enjoy this game. But Aerosmith is all over this game. So pick Metallica. I have to pick that one up now. <laughs> but get the one that's for Metallica. After that, I played an indie game called Discolored. This is a unique game. It's a walking simulator meets point and click. It's very light on the point and click, but you are stopped and dropped off into a, like a little gas station and there's nothing else around you. It's literally just a gas station, a tower, and you just see an open road. And what's funny is you can go to the edge and you see like the drop off and you can fall down. So just FYI, <laughs> you can fall into like a little void, but you just put back where you were. I think they let you like this a little indie thing like, hey, you're just funny, haha, <laughs> and then move on. But the main objective is to find these colored objects. You see the, the little thing, they're stuck on different objects and you're like, how do I get there? So you have to solve the puzzles along throughout the game to get to the next color, to get to the next color, and you want to get three colors and then get to the tower and complete the game. Not really much story to it. I mean, there is a little bit of story, but it's mostly just the journey of solving a puzzle, satisfaction of solving the puzzle, and then moving on to the next puzzle. And there's a lot of puzzles. Like, it's a lot of puzzles. It took me an hour, an hour, two hours to, to finish all the puzzles. And I think you probably could speed run it if you knew what you're doing after that, but had a good time with this, solid game. If you're not into point and clicks, that's the only thing I would say. Don't get it unless you're really happy with the walking simulator and point and click kind of game. The last game I played was another indie game. This is an old game. It's just as like for some weird reason there was doing like an indie like sale on Switch and it's called Pinstripe. It is a morbid game, just FYI. If you're not into morbid games or games that involve hell, probably not going to like this game. But you are a father slash priest who is in hell and you have to find out why he's in hell and also you are with the daughter and the daughter is kidnapped by a gentleman who takes the girl and just you have to follow him but the environment has puzzles so he'll fly away with her and you have to solve the puzzle for that part of the environment get yourself through the next part and start the next scene it's really good. I enjoy this game. I am surprised to know that one person made almost all of the game or all the game in general. And it's a great game. I enjoyed the story. There was times where there was enemies and you have to shoot them. So I thought, seriously, I thought it was going to be like one of those, again, walking simulators, which I don't mind. I love walking simulator style games. If the story is a very unique, intriguing kind of game. And I had fun with this one. Um, there's people that could hurt you, animals, the creatures that could hurt you, and you meet everybody along the way. I loved the puzzles. They were not difficult, but they still made you think. Also, there was a great art style. I enjoyed the art. It was 2D, but it was cartoony, but it had a nice grunge feel to it because it's supposed to be hell, but it was very, very good. This guy did a great job, and now I want to find other games that he has made and hopefully get to play them in the near future, but solid way to end the game slash fun, unique styles all over around the world, and recommend for sure. And there you have it, everybody. I completed 10 more games, so I am at 27 for the total so far this year. Let me know, what were your highlights for the month? Did you have any unique games that you played that were 10 out of 10s for you? If you're new, please hit the sub button. Helps out the channel. Appreciate everybody, all your support, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Gal. She's here, she's playing games.